Um, so I'm just recording this also for uh, for the others. So not not everybody can can join tonight, but I'm glad that uh, that uh, we have you guys. Um, so <clears throat> I think uh, I'm going to be doing this on a quite a regular basis. Um, and this is something that we should have done right from the beginning of the challenge and to do it every single week to give you feedback on your on your photos and on your videos. Um, mostly, um, the critique is going to be um, around the around the metadata because that uh, we need to really kind of uh, get a grabs on that. Uh, one second. Um, Paul, Paul has just joined. One second. Um, hi, Paul. How are you doing? Uh, I can't hear you. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah. You have to unmute yourself. Hello. Good evening. Great, great. I'm doing fine. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, some people have been saying it's kind of been an intense uh, few weeks with uh, all these meetings at Amazing Aerial <laughs> kind of jumping online all the time. But it's, I think it's. Uh, it's also it's also nice, but it'd be kind of good to get your feedback at the, at the end of the challenge to to get your get your feedback about um, how how it was. Um, uh, there's still a bunch of people coming in now. That's great. Um, <clears throat> hello, Aga. Hi, Kalada. Uh, obedience. Great. Um, so. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a, of a, of a feedback. So um, some of you have been at Amazing Aerial for quite a while and you understand um, a lot of things and if you've, you've learned a lot. Um, and the, the people that are also new here, um, they still need to be quite a bit of catching up. But related to the AI metadata tool, I think this is something that we must really work on. <clears throat> Uh, here's Camosis. Um, okay. Uh, good morning, Moses. Good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon. You're not in your car today. No. <laughs> I'm actually home. I do have a home. Great, great. I'm not, I'm not like Michele and uh, driving around. In my yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's in he's in India at the moment. He's flying around these crazy places. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and Aga also, yeah, also thank you very much for for joining tonight. So I will just kind of uh, con uh, continue what uh, what I was saying. So um in terms of the photo critique, um there will be critique related to the photography and the way it's shooting and compo. Um, but a lot is going to be related to the metadata, related to um, how you're preparing your photos. So um, the AI metadata tool is here to make your life a lot easier. And the way that I see that the way you're putting in um, keywords into the instruction field, um, that can be streamlined. It's going to make your life even easier. So I'm going to explain um, a lot of things how the, me the metadata tool works. Um, so Oh, great. I'm going to uh, share my screen now and I'm going to come back. Let me just quickly go back to the, to the beginning. I'm on my on my laptop uh, this evening, so uh, the screen might be a little bit small, but I'm going to uh, try to enlarge it as much as possible. OK, here's the Lightroom catalog. So, so just that you know, I'm working from a work in progress catalog which I downloaded. So I only have the the I only have the previews. I actually don't have all the the, the high res photos. So I can't really go into develop mode and kind of show you some some tips and tricks in 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 there. But I can actually tell tell you. So <clears throat> I just wanna bring up my notes because I took some notes for everybody. So I'm going to start from the top. So uh, Aga 
as your A, your <laughs> start with A, you're the first person that I'm going to I'm going to review. So firstly, what I wanted to say is that you submitted 330 photos, which is oh, wow. uh, which is really great. Um, <clears throat> so what is important is that, of course, to get the diversity in what you're also shooting, but what you must also be careful in is that um, in terms of uh, repetition. So it's good that you did these shots, for example, of yourself, so like of, of yourself there, but you also need to do a little bit of a curation um, of your own work. So here you can see uh, Nuncio, he, he selected like these two here, you can see the five stars and five stars. So um, if there's a lot of difference within the photos, of course you can submit those, but if they are similar, um, I would say in this one, this case here and this case here, they kind of similar. So I, you need to curate yourself also a little bit. Uh, excuse me, there's other people wanting to get in. Um, good evening, Phil. So I'm going to continue. So important point is that you also need to curate yourself when you send in um so if you can know, see... I, I suck at this because it was too too many photos and i was like fuck i don't know which one is the best you know exactly so so this is also a workflow that you could have um and which the workflow that i have when i import my photos i go through them all and i put a one star one star one star the one that i like i i do this really grand selection of the things that i think are worthwhile so i put one 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 and then once i've kind of did this first overview of putting a one star then i go into um i mean here you go rated and then you get the selection of what you did and then you can do another um in, another curation of your work so you 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 do it in in phases like oh i like these ones but now that i like them okay then then you can get a clearer view when you've done a, a one star and then from there you can still do another curation and add a, a two stars and then you kind of curate it a bit a bit tighter um but but i i it's not a it's not something bad that you're doing it's i think it's great that you you make varieties and that is really cool and if you do have um so like the variety of uh, vertical and horizontal that's great um but if you're like for example here you're standing in the middle okay but there you don't there you're not standing at all so this is like a variation so this actually works so maybe you don't want somebody in the photo sometimes you do want somebody in the photo so that's what's that, that was my first point um yes and i i really love that you were just a second i'm getting a notification here aha uh -huh. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you can. I admit, uh, here comes Andrew. So, so what, uh, what Patrick was saying about um, doing doing your curation, um, this is also something which is good also when you're doing your editing in terms of colors. Uh, you can also edit. Um, sometimes you get some tunnel tunnel vision when you're editing, and it's always good to kind of take a break. So either you're saying, okay, tomorrow I, I will come back to this, or once you've done all your edits, then you come back to the beginning and you go through everything again with a with a fresher eye. So. That's also really important. So whether you're curating or whether you're you're editing, uh, of course you can you can take your time. So I really like um, how you played around with the patterns, um, yeah, with yourself in the photo, without yourself in there. So I think this is the creative part, and this is what I think is is really cool is that you can shoot a location. But then you can start playing around with the patterns. So um, I really, really like that. And what I also like, I mean, I love all these city shots. I like that they're low. 
um this, this is what i mean we we shoot like from from quite high and get like the full landscape of, of a town which is great but then to go down and get the streets um get the buildings get those details of 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 uh of the city so this is really great and uh and and, and i really like that um also just kind of be careful in terms of um like the value of the photo i'm not sure if this is somebody would 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 want to buy this i mean i'm not saying that because it's for the snow um we do sell quite a few uh, snowy landscapes and cities on under, under the snow um because sometimes we imagine that it always has to be sunny it has to be perfect weather uh, as a matter of fact there's a lot of imagery that people require where they want it actually bad weather they want it cloudy um so this is something that you should also bear in mind um so yeah i mean Agu, I, I love your style i love your i mean this is a great time of day to shoot um so this just only positive um so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so now i'm going to come come to the to the um here to the instruction field. So I'm going to repeat this tonight again and again, so be ready for it. What you need to do is really um, put in um, really the essential keywords. So don't put in locations because the location, if you write Lithuania in the instructions, it just makes no sense if you put uh, Vilnius in the instructions it also doesn't make sense because it's already in in there so you must really be very precise about what you're doing and i would always recommend putting one or two keywords not more or a set set of keywords so if it's like a name of a bridge like a tower bridge then you would write tower bridge um i think you didn't repeat i think i put the name of the park the name of the building and something i don't remember uh yeah i mean for example yeah, here you wrote uh, abstract. Um, let me just check this here, for example. Okay, there you got the nearest river, which is great. So then it's gonna take, and I don't know, for some reason, I mean, the city is, is Vilnius, right? It's not the state. It's city and the state in the same time, yeah. Okay, okay, great. Um, okay. <laughs> It's weird here because the states are the names of the biggest cities. So Kaunas is Kaunas, okay. yeah. yeah. Okay, I understand. I understand. Uh, so this, for example, Trikai Castle, that's perfect. You don't need to put anything else. Um, let me look. Uh -huh. Yeah, what I wanted to... Oh, yes, uh, there was also... Um, let me just find... Um, if I put... No, I didn't put it. Um, yes, what I wanted to say as well is that this one, for example, here you put in the headline the model release which is perfect okay however um this one uh, there was some where you didn't put it in maybe because you were from behind like this one for example you you didn't put it in so oh, even if you, yeah so e even if because here um you're from behind okay but even if you're from behind, you still need to put it in. Oh, okay. Yes. So the principle is, if a person can recognize themselves in a photo, then you need to put it in. It's not about if the person is recognizable or not. It's like if the person can recognize themselves. Um, also, the other thing that I saw in this photo, of course, there's another person here. Yeah, he wants to smoke in the same time. He destroyed my vision. <laughs> Okay, but also in the other shots, um, when I'm looking through the window here, uh, there were actually people in the in the office here that you could kind of see more or less. You just have to be careful about that as well, you know, like uh, if this person at their desk and everything like that. So that's on. Yeah. Sorry, I I just saw it on the photo after that they worked there. I wasn't. I thought nobody's there before him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is that um, if there are people that are recognizable within the photos, you have to be careful. So you either blur them out or you remove them um, or something like that if you want to make it commercial. 
so that, that's what you have to have to bear in mind um so there was another photo here no what i just wanted to show some a really beautiful photo of the footbridge yes this one here uh yeah for me this is a, a great shot you know um like the foreground middle ground background you got you got a lot of uh, information in here um but for example i don't know what the name of the bridge is there's the ballista something i this weird names there are all all the things around yeah okay okay so what's really important i mean when we're shooting locations um and people are going to be searching for something so somebody's like i want to search for this bridge so it's really important that you actually have the name of the bridge um so you can say um the bridge's name so the, so the ai tool sorry there's more people coming in now um so what you have to understand i'm going to kind of give a, a an overview of how the ai metadata uh, tool works so um it works with image recognition so if you have a photo of a boat it'll understand that it's a boat you don't need to write that it's a boat if you have a picture of a bridge it's going to understand that it's a bridge but it won't know the name of the bridge so this is where we need to help the ai metadata tool saying um we know that you know that it's a bridge but i'm going to actually tell you what the name of the bridge is or the name of the building or the name of the river um but so something that um it can actually recognize that it cannot recognize the name of so it also uses the gps uh information so that's why it's really important to put the gps information so here for example your gps information is missing for oh, some shit. reason yeah so for, for some reason so um, the same way that when you're doing your curation, when you're doing your editing and you come back, you must do the same thing. You must do a quality control. You must go through all your metadata. And you just kind of quickly all go through it. Like, okay, does, does every single field, like, does every single photo have the instructions? And make sure that it has all the GPS information in there. Um, because if it's not consistent, then we're gonna be spending a lot of time. Okay, we can take another photo. Um, Okay, so yeah, this one. I, see. I always check, but I think I was overtired already in my mm -hmm. brain once. Mm -hmm. um, everybody makes this uh, these errors. You, you you're not unique in that. Um, so this is the reason why that we do a QC. That we do a QC. You do a QC on the on the metadata before you send it. So yeah, so what I want to say is that great photo, missing GPS data, and please put the name of the bridge. Uh, that is oh. the name of the bridge. This Bali is the first thing. It's a bridge after I wrote river, after I wrote neighborhood, and after uh, something. Okay. Yeah. So if it's if this is the name of the the bridge, yes. then you say, as it is bridge. Then you need to write bridge. Ah, okay. So you understand that it's bridge because you're writing ski ski pisques. This so is the the yeah, I thought it's enough. Yeah. Okay. No. So that's the other thing is that um so the, the the gps information is is sufficient to to create the image uh, to create the, the 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 information um and the and the metadata for it so you don't need to necessarily write the name of the of the district um unless this is like this is like the the downtown area so maybe this downtown area has a certain name so you can write the name of the bridge and the name of this district which is maybe the district is called uh, ski. So maybe you can write it like districts, for example, like that. But um, yeah, but 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 the other thing is that what you what you don't need is city, and you don't need skyline. Oh, okay. So and did you then you need the name of the river? So you can write this is the name of the bridge, for example, and. Ah, you actually you wrote the name of the of the river. Okay, so all you need to do is um, I'm 
Okay, so those three essential keywords, what I'm trying to get at is you, you don't need to write clouds, you don't need to write anything like that. You just need to, because it'll understand if it's autumn as well because of the colors. Um, so this is, this is also important. Um, so yeah. So there was also another one that I, I came, uh, saw here, which I need to just to mention before I move on to, uh, here, this one here. So here it says footbridge, you see? Oh my God. Yeah, I know why, okay. because I copy paste sometimes to make it exactly. faster. Exactly, exactly. So um, I was saying to uh, to George uh, a little bit earlier, um, it's great to use autofill. It's great. But if you make a mistake, then you're doing autofill on a lot of photos. So just try to just try to be to be sure when you're doing your autofill. So um, or your auto populating. So now Select, for example, like 10 photos with the same thing, and then I will have to feel I make it faster. I from yeah, I know yeah, what yeah, you I mean. mean. So, for example, this one here, because it has this okay, this has footbridge as well. Ah, because I think because you you took it from maybe these photos, that's why, because it was it was the yeah, same I place. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Okay, I got so uh, that's uh, that's a critique for, for, for your photos. Um, I mean, photographically. I can't say anything. It's uh, I, I love I love your work. So, but we just need to, as I said, as I mentioned before, we're going to be talking a lot about the the metadata and and how to make it uh, better and how to make it streamlined. Um, so let me go on to Ali. So, so the first thing I wanted to mention is in this one here. Um, so also again, Ali, great great photos. You're shooting with the drone. You're not uh, flying over the towels with your with your paramotor. So this one, for example, um, is a great shot. And I wanted to kind of talk around the the workaround in the sense of um, the distortion that we get. So the closer we go with our drone down towards the ground, especially in architecture, the more the angles are gonna kind of pan out. And there's a way to get around that. I mean, of course, you can play around with, with the distortion in Lightroom, but in camera, um, what I would do, I would go a little bit higher, so there's less distortion. And because you can see here, you're at 8,000 pixels and by, by 6,000, you can find a little bit higher. Um, so you're a little bit further away, so this distortion is less. And then afterwards, you can crop, you can actually crop the photo to this, dimensions and you'll have less this um uh this this distortion i mean it's a style it works also fine but um i just wanted to to also talk about that mm -hmm. so so for this uh bosphorus is fine um also this is really good because you're just putting it what is the essential keywords bosphorus and Rumeli Fortress. I just thought there were some other ones that I saw here. Um, Cause I made a note. Uh -huh, yes, that's what I think it was here. Yeah, so you see Ali here, it says uh, Bebek, sublocation Bebek. And here it also says Bebek. So to make it more streamlined for you, so you don't need to repeat yourself, and to make things faster, you don't need to put in the location information in, in the instruction. So avoid location information within the instruction field. Mm -hmm. And I was also mentioning here, you have boats and you write boats. So avoid that because the image recognition is going to recognize that it's a boat. It's going to recognize that there's the sea. Um, but might not know what the name of that bay is. So better write the name of the bay. Um, so I mean, I think it's Bebek, which is the, which is which is the district, which is fine. Um, yeah, and autumn. If you want to put the autumn, that's also fine. I think just to kind of um, help the AI. Well, what we do try to to help the AI tool, um, but we don't want to overload it either. Um, yeah, Paul, you have a question. 
I can't hear. You have to unmute yourself. About the location information, uh, I see that uh, Ali wrote down the sublocation. So I understand the, AE, the metadata tool will read sublocation as well, not only city and state, but also the sublocation. Yes, it will. Yeah, OK, that's good to yeah. know. Thanks. OK. Um, so yeah. So as I mentioned, uh, don't write boats or don't write anything which is which the image recognition can actually understand. Just to save you time, right? I'm gonna move on to Andy. I think uh, Andy's here. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 uh, sorry. Sorry, there's still people coming in. Okay, I thought I saw Andrew uh, joined us now. Any case. So this is the perfect example of, as you can see, the instruction field, Jin head radar station. That's all you need. Because, um, yeah, that's the only thing that it won't understand. Here it's uh, Tantalon Castle. That's it. That's all you need to put in. So I wanted to just talk about the composition of a few of Andy's photos here. Um, I use this one here. Um, let me just increase this a bit. So What's important when you're composing your photo is that uh, there's a balance. And in this case, you would either want to have more of the sky or just crop the sky out and just focus more on the, on, on the castle. So when you're doing your composition, just make sure that um, everything is, is balanced. Um, I have the feeling here that, uh, yeah, maybe there's lacking a little bit of the, the bottom part and there's lacking the top part. So this is a panorama that uh, Andrew, he, he made. So just, uh, just check how you are um, composing it. Another, so another photo, what I wanted to tell you about um, is this one here. This one here, for example, what I what I think that's important to do is when we're shooting certain locations is really to take advantage of every single angle that we can take. And in this scenario here, let's say the tower here is mixed with the background. And as this um, castle is standing on, on this cliff, we could give it even more importance of how it's standing on the cliff and how tall it is. And what I always like to do, if there's something standing out, is to go down with my drone and make these towers stand out in the sky. So, um, so bring yeah to bring it down and to play with that with that composition, um, whether it's a, it's a building or a, or 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 a house or something like that, just to um, make it appear in the sky i don't know if you understand exactly what i'm meaning but so that it's uh that the silhouette of the building is actually in the sky so, so by 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 bringing the drone down and also another thing which is really missing in the series that and and is shot is that there's no uh, so you have the shot from the sea inland but there's no shot from um, inland into the sea and it would be really great to have the castle here with let's say the field in front and then you have the, the castle and then behind you actually have the sea uh, Evolt, when I get to Evolt, that's exactly what he did he did all those angles so when you're in a location try to get every angle possible um and also something else is that when you're shooting a subject like a castle also try to get much closer i mean it's great to get some panoramas 
um, quite far away. Um, again, they're quite far away, but in the series, there's nothing close. It'd be really great to see this castle uh, much closer than we're seeing it. So um, this is, I'm done with uh, with Andy. I'm going to go on to, to Christopher Fenton. I think, Paul, when you mostly you're worried that detail will not show in this in these pictures. That's why they make them far away. So um, I know you you want detail, but what kind of detail do you like to see from the, one of those castles? Okay, I'm I'm going to jump to Evolt's uh, example straight away because I think that will um, highlight what I'm trying to say. Okay. Um, see, this is the example. This is what I was trying to mention with Andy's photos, is that what was missing was the castle in front and the sea behind and whatever sky there is. And now you can see, you, you, you can see the silhouettes of the castle, um, so this is what, what I was meaning, kind of getting the detail and going a little bit closer down. And does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. So this is, so he did the perfect example, like, okay, I'm shooting from land into sea. And he says, okay, now I want to get from sea into land. So getting these different, different perspectives. And not only did he, um, uh, do the the shot from the land into the sea, but he got kind of got closer to the subject, and it just makes it way way more interesting in terms of how you're composing your photo. So I kind of come back to it here again, and yeah, just the lost opportunities to get the the, the front. Um, you see all this here. He could have shot like this way in. And get all these beautiful rocks here and get the castle and this kind of green patch of grass there. Um, so yeah, that's that's why I, I just try to take advantage as, as much as possible. When you're on location, um, try to understand all the angles that you can get from from, from, from a shoot. So I'm gonna come to Chris Fenton's. Um, so zero zero five I mentioned here. Yeah, so in, in terms of composition again, uh, I understand that it would maybe very be quite difficult to shoot this building from this angle um, because there's a street below and there's um, a, a building on the other side. But um, yeah, it's in terms of composition, it's not so great to have that line there. So try to find different angles. I mean, there was one nice angle that he shot here. This is nice. Um, also, what I would say is um, when you're composing, you also need to maybe get a little bit more space around around your photo. Um, yeah, there's always some kind of rule that you have a frame, like an invisible frame around your photo, and there needs to be some kind of space, right? So when we when we had that issue, when we had that photo, um, where Andrew wasn't shooting the horizon. Uh, which one was it here again? Uh, yeah, this one here. Yeah, there needs to be a little bit of space around the edges of the photo. And here it just looks crammed. Uh, that, that's, the, that's the composition. Um, what else do I have to say about? Um... Yeah, that's all I wanted to say about um, his his photos. I mean, he didn't have he didn't have many. So David, so the first thing I I wrote here, um, also I. You can see, you got you send in kind of two identical photos every time. I don't know, why why that is. You see, uh, but for, for some reason, so also again, when you're sending in your photos, just send the original that you want to send in. They're made with a zoom lens and uh, not with a zoom lens. No, but you can see that they're they're identical, right? 
one is edit and one's not edit. You can see the, the file name changing. So it's, 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 you've sent in two files and, they're, oh. and, and they're identical. It, it's not a big, it's, it's, it's not a big issue, but it's just like in terms of us, you know, we need to go through a lot of photos, better that you just. If there's something went wrong with the, with, with the WeTransfer upload and uh one of the metadata uh, the photos that i send in were uh -huh, yes, I can see. without metadata so uh, the but then you sent it again okay. creation yeah someone that did the creation uh put the metadata on the right place but they they duplicated i did not send in the uh, duplicates okay okay i understand we were talking about that the other day i remember i remember okay yeah. I got that um so just um uh, one photo where was this yeah so just this for example i mean just kind of check out the the angles of your of your shot uh, of of your compo so kind of goes off a little bit to the left as you can see um it's always good to keep your angle straight um so in, in in terms of architecture i mean i can't show you here because um i don't have i just have the previews but you need to kind of put your ar architectural line straight um mm -hmm. and then here i have the metadata so again um here you wrote since Martin's Kirk and then comma church and then uh, lemurs and then monuments and then dyke. So why would just recommend that you write just the name of the church? So St. Martin's Kirk, for example. So it could because it's going to understand that it is a, that it is a church uh, from from the image recognition. Um, yeah, so just avoid avoid the, the unnecessary okay i would i would say it, it, ai cannot recognize if it's a monument if or not yes or no but yeah so if you if you write a sorry there's a some noise in the background um so yeah just write write the name of the church so my only question would be like now should we write the name of the church in english or or in or in, in in Dutch, but um I would just keep it um in its in its original name, I would say here. Yeah, that's the original name that's there, yes. Yeah, yeah. So again, so in this case, what I would do, I would just write um something like that. Okay, St. Martin's Kirk. There you go. Um so apart from that. Um, I don't have any anything else. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything else. I mean, you 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 sent only the submission with the same church in it, so there's not a lot of diversity in in your submission. So I don't have uh, a lot uh, else to to say about this. Um, so I'm gonna get to Evolts. So Evolts, uh, the issue with your with your submission is that you're putting keywords in the instruction fields and this is not something that this is not well, not what you must do you must just put um, the, the the important keyword again so here you put building street sea ocean trees water sunset roofs rainbow um you don't need to put that in okay. uh, first of all first of all um it says near uh coroni so it'll understand that it's that city um let me just try and find another one here again as well so the city is this um and you wrote all of that so you can save yourself a lot of time and you just write um um maybe the maybe the name of the fortress see here you wrote you write fortress but you haven't written the name of the fortress and that's what's really important this is what's really important for the client um is when when they're doing a search so um yeah understand so again this okay this is called cape this is the name of it so that that's perfect 
I think it's okay that you put the lighthouse, and I think it would be actually best if you if you had the name of the late the name of the lighthouse. Maybe the name of the lighthouse is Cape uh, Lef uh, Katas yeah. Lighthouse. And, and the lighthouse, yes. Yeah. So that's what you can do. So, um, so I would so there's a tornado. So I would I would delete ocean. Uh, Ionian Sea. I would also delete uh, clouds and cliff and rocks. I would just delete all that. Um, oh, it doesn't take that away. Oops. So there is a tornado, and it's most likely the AI because it's quite far away wouldn't actually recognize that there is a tornado. Um, but yeah, I would just write, like, for example, tornado, lighthouse, and Cape uh, uh, Lef Lefkatas. So yes. to, just just keep it easy, keep it simple. Um, again, the same thing here. What is the name of this place? So it's not in here. So this is you can you can do. The name is Metoni. The name, yeah, it's the same name. A city is the same name. The, the, the castle is Metoni. Also, this the name of this. Uh, yeah, yeah. the same name as the city. The same name. The, this castle. Okay, so then you write. Okay, so then you could just so the good thing to do is write that Metoni Castle like that. That's it. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it'll say it'll understand that it's sun sunset or it, it'll understand that or it's either sunset or sunrise. Mm -hmm. Um, but in this case, I think you you shot all these photos uh at, at sunrise, yes, uh, yeah, because you're you get up early, you guys. <laughs> yeah, always, yeah. <laughs> that's nice. Oh, yeah, I mean your shots are great. The light light is great. There's nothing to say about that. Um, so here again, you know. Um, so just for example, this one here. I would write. Um, so this is the name of the city, right? So you don't yeah. need to put that. So you can just write uh, rain rainbow uh, over city, something like that. So then yeah. it will write rainbow over near Coroni or, um, but because uh, that it, it might not recognize, it might or it might not, but you can help it. We have, we're trying to help it there. Yes, yeah, that's, that's right. Um, also, what I think we should try to do as well is to write, if it's a top down, that we do actually write top down. Yeah. Like that. Now, also, another thing is that if it's just a, a generic, a view of a city, for example, uh, like a wide view of a city, then you actually don't have to put anything in the in the instruction field. Um, that's also important to know. Um, it's only if there's something really specific in, in the image. Um, yeah, Evold, that's all I wanted to say. Save your time with uh, with the keyword. Just put the, the essentials in. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. I'm going to move on to François Détail. So, again, so François, I don't have anything to say about his uh, his composition. Um, again, he's done some great shots um, over Brisbane. Um, don't don't have a problem, and this is this is a this is great great stuff that he's shot. Um, the only thing again <laughs> is the metadata. So, um, in this sense, like, what can we see? We see that it's the downtown, and we can see that there's a bridge. So the only thing I would I would write down is like, okay, and he wrote like also CBD. So I would just like rather write the business district, um, or if the business district has a name, write the name of that business district. Okay, it's called Brisbane uh, CBD. CBD. Um, so and then I would just write the name of the bridge. So I wouldn't write City Botanic Gardens because the thing is that it's there's just too many key just too many keywords here, and it's I think the AI tool is just going to say oh there's just too much here to actually put in, and we only have two hundred characters. So and he has to kind of build the caption. So I would just write in this case um, Kangaroo Point Bridge. You can say the, the river, and you can say uh, Brisbane, and I think the, the city cat is the the catamaran is the boat, but it's not the main subject here. So that's all I would put. 
So as you can see, um, the Francois has put a bunch of, of, of keywords in here, which just makes it complicated. And not, so in this sense here, I would just write uh, Bulumba Ferry Terminal, and that's about it. And maybe the river, the name of the river it says Brisbane River Bulimba Ferry Terminal. And then maybe because it's a city cat, but maybe the AI won't understand what the city cat is. So, um, like ferry, ferry service or something like that. Then you would write um, just something like Brisbane River Bulimba Ferry Terminal City Cat Ferry Service, something like that. So as I, as I mentioned, it's very much about the keywords um, and 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 the AI and the AI metadata. Um, also, what I wanted to mention is that if if you're shooting panoramas, it would be also really good to write panorama or aerial panorama. So, because that might also be a, a keyword that um, that people might be looking for and panoramas sell really well just that you know that and one of the challenges that i would also like uh for the future is that you go out and shoot a bunch of panoramas because from one panorama you can make different compositions afterwards from from one same photo um so in this case brisbane river bulimba golf club okay that's a golf club um okay and then i would write uh Panoramic view, panoramic view. So they know that that is a pan. And then of course, if it's a top down, then to add at the end, top down, like that. Um, cool. So I'm, I'm done with, I'm gonna go done with Francois, move on to, George. So George has some great photos. I mean, he shot in his own style. Um, he color graded it in his in his own way. And I think he has some great shots. Uh, so wide views of the castle. Um, where the one with the castle here? Some really beautiful ones of the bays, which is great. So um, what what mistake what mistake did he make? he copy pasted or auto filled um, the shop so here there's no shop right so this would be the case where you would not have to put any keywords here you could just write okay no keywords because the ai tool is going to say aerial view of uh Bayona, um in uh in in, in spain for example but for example if this promenade here actually has a name um so he, he wrote promenade for example so you can just write seafront or or promenade if the promenade promenade has a name even better you just write the promenade name like that but whatever the name is and that's all you would need to do um so let me just go here So yeah, otherwise I think it's uh, quite okay what he wrote. Houses on hill next to the beach. Uh, so spelling mistakes. Um, I believe that you can get away from from doing spelling mistakes because the way the captions are are created is with ChatGPT. Um, so it takes all these instructions and from that and from the from the GPS settings, it's going to create the keywords and it's also going to create a um, a caption. So if you do make some make some spelling mistakes, it's not a big deal, um, because uh, ChatGPT will definitely not make any spelling mistakes. Unless you make a spelling mistake of of the exact location, then that might be an issue. Um, aha. Also, I can here say it's Cabo Silero lighthouse and he, there's another light, lighthouse which is also somewhere around there and uh, so what i'm trying to say is that try to find the name of the lighthouse 
um, because that that's uh, really important information. If it's the subject of your image, you need to write uh, the name of the lighthouse, which would be great. Um, Yeah, so what I was also mentioning before is that um, um, always to go and do a quality control on your on your metadata, making sure that everything is in there, the GPS settings and the GPS data, and that you've uh, put uh, information in every single uh, in, uh, instruction field. So yeah, there was also a case where he he was shot a beach here and let me just see which beach it was again um, mm -hmm. let me try to find it okay oh i think it was this one here nope in any case What uh, what George wrote, he wrote the name of the beach, so um, but with a comma. And I'm just trying to find uh, find it where it was. Okay, I I can't I can't remember. But if it's if it's a name of the beach, uh, don't put a comma. If it's uh... sorry, I'm just a bit confused. Ah, uh, here here here's the problem. Here he here says uh cesantes comma beach well if the name of the beach is cesantes you can just write cesantes beach so remove the um the comma and just write cesantes beach so that's all i wanted to say about that um now i'm coming on to caladas so you've got some great shots here calada um from Port Harcourt and I think you've got like a great great day great 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 day shooting different things however here this is this highway it's called the uh, Ar artillery flyover sorry I think um can I just mute you uh because I'm, I'm getting the reverb. Okay, I just I just muted you. I'm sorry, Kaladai. So here you wrote uh, our artillery flyover, which is great because that's the that's the name of this road. However, you copied paste the the wrong or the the same keyword here on the flyover. So this is not the flyover. This is not the artillery flyover. This is not either the artillery flyover. So what I'm trying to say is like, really please be careful of what you're shooting and don't put in wrong instructions because you're not serving the AI tool at all here. So in this case, this is a top down of uh, like a, a little stream or a river going through. Um, so just maybe write, write a neighborhood with river going through um but and then i i you, you copy pasted it everywhere um and there was some other so this is also what i mentioned wanted to say is that when you're shooting at night it's best best to shoot um at twilight not when it's kind of 10 o'clock at, at night um but it's better to shoot when there's a little bit of uh, light in the sky so it's, it's so the shadows are not so dark you can see it's it's pitch black here um, it's always good to to have a little bit of light in the sky. Um, mm -hmm. So, this, for example, is a, a great series of photos, and I and, and I love it. You have the same uh, keywords in the instructions: as Greater Taft City. So maybe it's Taft City, but you need to maybe explain a little bit more what is happening here. So I would, for example, here say. Uh, if it if the name of the place is Taft City, I would write a construction site. Con for example, like that, or development, or property development, something like that, which actually explains what what is what is going on. Um, so this one, for example, you did the same thing as Greater Taft City, and so 
I understand that it's easy to copy and paste into a whole bunch of other photos, but it's really not going to serve you if you're just uh, copying and pasting random um, instructions in every single photo. So please make the effort. Uh, here again, it says Greater Taft City. Here it says Greater Taft City. But uh, it might be the location of the place, but here this is a, a, a dump yard or something like that. It's a, a recycling plant. So you need to write that. So in this case, maybe uh, recycling um, plant or something like that. Um, yeah. So again, this is Taft City. All I'm, I'm saying is, Please just don't repeat for every single photo. Um, so let me just go ask my other notes. Yeah, that was about it. So in terms of composition, in terms of light, uh, it's kind of great what you've done. Um, so I'm going to go to the next photographer. This is Lexo. So first thing to say is that Lexo has shot all his photos in 16 by 9. So what does that mean? You can see um, normally when you shoot with your with your drone, you need to set it to 4 by 3 and not 16 by 9. So 16 by 9 is, is the dimensions that the video will take. Uh, sometimes it might, might look cool in that format, but you're losing a lot of pixels. So here you've got... 5,300 by 2,900. So you, you're kind of missing about four or 500 pixels uh, on, on, on either side. And you know, on top of that, we would not accept these photos because they're under 3,000 pixels on the short side. There, here's 2,900. So, so they would all be rejected. Um, that, that is the first point. Um, so yeah, in this case, um, the compo composition is not so great. The lighting is not so great. Um, yeah, I don't know. This seems as if there's be something a little bit maybe wrong with your with your camera. Here it seems to be light, and here it seems to be quite dark. Um, I don't know what happened. Um, okay, here you, you played around a little bit with uh, with the colors, which I mean, that that's also okay. Um, but I don't know for some reason. There's a really dark areas uh, on your on your on your camera. Um, yeah, these are great, but again, cannot be accepted because they're they're under three thousand, and this one is even I could say even worse. It's one thousand seven hundred pixels, so um, this wouldn't would this would be uh, rejected. And so with this one, I mean they they would all be. So just check uh, also for the light. And also for the for the resolution of the photos that you're sending, and this is the typical mistake that we had when we first started Amazing Aerial. That photos would come in under three thousand pixels because the drones they weren't shooting; um, they were shoot, shooting at twelve megapixels. Now they shoot over over twenty. Um, but please uh, shoot in four by three. Um, so Mirko. Um, these photos here, so what I wanted to say is that um, what's really the, the, the series of photos that you sent, um, just one second, somebody else is coming in now. Okay. Um, I mean, it's great that you went out and shoot, but let's say the, the, the subject matter is not uh, what Amazing Ariel would need. Um, and they don't look like really aerial, and also the composition composition is not so great. I mean, there's one or two photos which are kind of good, but um, yeah, it just you kind of quite low to the ground. Um, but I would I would say that um, not not many of these photos would would be uh, accepted because they don't like for example this one is nice and i think this one would be would be accepted but apart from that and maybe this one as well but apart from that uh, i mean maybe this one would be but this kind of subject here um, this is not something that we would we would take and also the editing so for example here is completely black um, you really need to make sure that um, that the, the 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 colors and the lights is uh, is is even 
I mean, I can see what time of day it is. The, the shadows are quite hard. So this is why you're getting some really, really dark shadows. Um, yeah, so I have the same comment with, uh, with Mislav um, here. What second is it? Number... Yeah, this one here. So this is the same same scenario as as Mirko, where you actually got got some quite hard lights and it's completely black here. So I mean, I can't do it because these I don't these are just previews. But you just like pull the shadows here, and all the dark areas will start to appear. So. Um, And also there's this photo here, number 32, but um, yeah, shot, shot completely into the light. Uh, this is something that you wouldn't accept either. Uh, these lens flares, sometimes it can look nice if it's coming from the side, it might be like a little bit, um, has a curve to it, but just shooting directly into the sun, uh, this, this wouldn't work. Um, So yeah, again, it's very, very dark here. So you need, need to be careful how you how you edit your photos. Um, moving on to Moarv. So Moarv, uh, I mean, you only sent in two photos. Uh, both photos are fine by me. The only thing is that um, here, I would, as it's a tea plantation, as this one is as well, I would write uh, tea plantation and telephone mast. So I would add both. So people, so the image, the AI understands that it's a uh, tea plantation and telephone mast. And in this case here with this one, if this is employee housing, I would write tea plantation or tea farm as you as you wrote here. And then I would write comma, employee housing, because it just says T farm. So just to, to separate it a, a, a little bit. Um, that's the only thing I would say. Otherwise, the, the shots are, are already great. Um, coming to obedience. Aha. Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. So obedience, here you can see 19 by 20. So this is, looks like video. Let's do some screen grabs from the videos. Uh, we cannot accept that. We need a full resolution. Um, and yeah, there's one ninety-five. Okay, yeah, that's what I just wanted to say. I mean, you you got some some cool shots. I mean, you sent in a lot of photos. Uh, we only accepted uh, like fifteen. Yes, what I wanted to say is here, like I was saying a little bit uh, with with uh, with Andrew's shots as well. When you're shooting something, try to give it some more space around the edges uh, that it's not so tight. As you can see, it's completely tight here, uh, and that doesn't doesn't really work in terms of composition. Um, I'm going to move on to Patrick. So, Patrick, you got some great shots here, and what I wanted to mention here is that this photo, because it looks as if people would actually be recognizable here or rec recognizable. So mm. if, if they're recognizable, then what's important is that you need to make, if you don't have a model release, I don't think that you have a model release for all those people. Um, so you need to you need to make it editorial. And to make a photo editorial, all you need to write is editorial in the headline. So we have a field called called the headline. And you just need to write editorial, and then the AI tool will compose the caption. So it'll put the date, and then it'll explain what the photo is. And then it'll also be sent as editorial, and it won't be able to be sold as commercial. So um, so that's, that's what I wanted to mention about this photo first. And then the second one is here it says razor clams, clamming shellfish. So I think we also need to help the AI tool here by saying that they're actually people. And I think it, it, the activity is called clamming, right? Mm -hmm. So I would write, just write people clamming, that's it. Um, and then you can also like maybe um, 
call a cat like razor clams and that's what they kind of uh uh fishing for like or hunting for the the the, the razor clams yes and and shellfish or just the razor clams um they're a form of i just suppose ai would figure out that razor clams are shellfish okay okay so that's fine if you want to have razor clam and shellfish um but what i would also but what i would just say is that what what the activity of these people are doing it's actually they're clamming so i would just write people clamming yeah okay uh, just so it so it understand because it might not understand what these people are doing so this is why you, you so you this is why you need to help them so that's all i would i would add there um or maybe i would say people clamming on beach something like that so, but uh, I think it will recognize that, that, that it is a beach, but it's kind of a little bit dark and everything. So just maybe help, help a little bit. Um, so these shots here, um, I, 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 we wouldn't, we wouldn't accept, accept them. Um, you would or would not? Would, we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't. Okay. Um, so but just because uh, there's maybe like a lack, uh, lack of depth or lack of subject uh, or something like that um i mean yeah maybe this one or uh but yeah it's not not really kind of what we would want to have within the portfolio however these shots that you have here these are amazing <laughs> these are these are great great shots okay you got i i really love this one for me this is like really really beautiful so again people clamming i would i would write again um but yeah then you got these shots these are these are stunning shots. Um, only thing here you can see, uh, Patrick, yeah. it says 2,992. So I'm not sure what drone you, you're, you're shooting with. It's on the map three with the, with the telephoto lens. Ah, yeah. it's a telephoto. OK. Should I just up res that the extra eight? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you just need to exactly. So here, um, OK, so it's a grain ship. Look at sound, Elliot Bay. Okay, and it's in Seattle. Great. I mean, um, yeah, that, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, Pacific Northwest. I mean, that's uh, what what is Pacific? But that's the region, or like uh, yeah. just in the world, yeah, that, or that's what's commonly known. You know, if, anytime you say Pacific Northwest, it's just the northwest corner of the U.S. Uh -huh, okay. Okay. Okay, I mean it's kind of a location. I mean, think Seattle and Washington, and here's so written. So here you see a sublocation, Elliott Bay, and you wrote Elliott Bay yeah. here. Yep. So again, you can save yourself some time not to put location information in. Yeah. Um, so unless it uh, like so, uh, I don't know how you pronounce that, but Puget or Puget? Um, Puget. <laughs> Puget. Puget Sound. Okay. So Puget Sound is this um, area, right? Yes, that's the larger body of water that Elliott Bay is in. Okay, so so that that's really good. So push it sound is good. I wouldn't put Pacific Northwest. Um, it, and... It's a common search term in the U.S. Though. Okay. Okay, then you you can leave it in, and that's fine. If if you think that's that is valuable, that is great. Um, okay, so uh, here you got the sublocation Smith Code Marina. Um, let me just kind of get on my notes here, what I wrote. Um, people clamming. Yeah, yeah. So it was, um, I mean, I don't have any, it's, it's anything to say about your photos. They're great. Um, yeah, this one, for example, here, maybe the subject is a little bit too far away. Um, this, one is, this one is perfect. Uh, these ones are just magnificent with the light and they have a foreground and, and a background so it's great um yeah these ones are also cool so when i was mentioning before um i think it was Kalada. um see the time of day that patrick shot this was you got the lights of the city but you also have the the light in the sky and it's it just makes the the, the photo less kind of harsh and black in the in, in in those dark areas so um yeah this is a perfect example of being able to get the city lights um and also a, a, a lighter sky so this is a great shot 
and then of course panorama so in, again here just write the name panorama view within okay. your within your um, instructions i think that would also help will do yeah but this is a great shot and as i said i want people to shoot more and more panoramas because these are really 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 beautiful and also from this panorama you'll be able to get a few shots out of this so this is the advantage as well so uh, yeah uh, patrick this was a really great batch apart from i told you those those uh, those sea ones i mean for example the ones in the in the sea i mean if there's surfers and stuff like that um, yeah. but uh, yeah or was this at high tide when the 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 clamors got like <laughs> washed away <laughs> Right, we're waiting, waiting until later in the day for the tide to go down to go back out and clam. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, cool. So, thank you, Patrick. So, I'm gonna, so Paul. So, Paul, you you sent in four photos, and the photos are great. Uh, nothing to say. Um, so it's more little bits about again the the um instructions um so here for example you have this stream here this canal um there's no mention of it in here no mention of the name in it so it would be really nice um autumn i think it you what what i would recommend paul is that you kind of put more like commas so you can just like great right uh um i mean for example here you got um the location and you have the location also in here so again you can save yourself some time by not putting it in and just explaining a little bit more um in the sense you could say like a canal or the name of the canal um you could write like uh, maybe uh shadows from trees or something like that maybe to to help a little help it a little bit but um yeah just just a little bit more Autumn colors in mixed forest. Okay. Um, I think the AI would recognize this photo. If you didn't put anything in there, it would recognize that it is a forest with uh, with, with trees. So even in that sense, um, maybe the name of the forest, I think you put it here. But just try to put more commas instead of making a phrase, put some more um, like just keywords. Um, so yeah again here i think it's not a problem putting warm evening evening lights which is fine um countryside meadow i don't think you need to put that there's a canal maybe you can write canal so it just emphasizes that there is a canal um and what is a uh, uh for okay i can't really pronounce that i'm going to make a fool of myself but what what is yeah, that the name of the can it's the name of the canal it is the name of the canal. Okay, great. Yeah. Super, super. So then just kind of write um, uh, for Del Donske uh, Brook Loop Canal. Yeah. yeah. And, and, that, and, and that's it. Just, just to make it very clear and simple for, for the second. I think somebody else is just. Uh, Thomas. Okay, he's coming a little bit late. <laughs> um, oh, here. Yeah. So like here, first snow um you can see also national park to Groot, so that's already in there so you can save yourself some time uh yeah so that's about it it's it's not about your composition the composition is great light is great uh yeah everything's great just kind of um just trying to fine tune a little bit the 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 instructions to save you time and for it to be more precise um Gary, yeah you're welcome uh Roma, so yeah i mean i i wrote i wrote to Roma, but so he has no gps information at all and i'm just going to show you guys because i wanted to show you this oh, okay this won't be able to work because i don't have um the phones itself okay so i'm not even opening up the dialogue box okay in the dialog box when you push export there's a there's some uh, ticks that you can take like tick about the about the gps metadata please don't take any of that because then it'll just delete all the gps settings so really make sure um that your your gps settings um or gps locations are in your photo and when you export them don't click any of the buttons within within the dialog box 
And just here, for example, Romain, um, he wrote uh, in the title. He doesn't need to write anything in the title. No keywords, no title, no description. Leave it completely blank, only the instruction field. So here, promenade marina, perfect. Uh, here, this is the name of the park. Uh, he wrote Aple Chao Park, perfect. That's all you need to do. And the AI will understand what is in there from a uh, from a visual point of view. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, Sumitrai, yeah, again, what I'm what I said is please separate the words with commas. Here he says autumn bridge trees. So it's autumn, there's a bridge, and there are trees. So don't write trees. You can write autumn if you if you want to, if you want to really want to emphasize that. I think the AI metadata will understand it. But what's important here is the bridge, the name of a bridge. And in this case, I think it's actually a rail bridge. So please write the name of the bridge and maybe rail bridge or something like that. Um, and also, yes, another thing. Um, here you wrote uh, fog. So again, comma, so autumn, comma, fog, comma, trees. If you want to put it, just always put a comma. And also try to be a little bit more precise. This is not really fog, this is more like mist. So try to also be a little bit uh, more precise on your. Um, yeah, that's the only thing I had to say. We didn't have many photos. Yeah, go ahead. Do you put the uh, top down in this uh, in this photo? Yes, yes. So when it's top down, please write top down. I think it's important because um, we'll need to run some kind of scripts in our in our database to kind of um, add the top down keyword to our photos because um, that is a search term. Because and for us, it's also important, you know, because if it's a top down, it's, that is something really really specific in 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 aerial photography. So. Uh, yeah, please put um, a top down in it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm coming to an end. So just a wait one second. So Thomas, so Thomas, I have quite a few things to say. Um, first of all, I love his photos because they're close to the ground. Um, I think it's great to have some aerial photos from general view, but this is great you can see the market you can see the people you can see the bustling you can see what's happening um i just love this okay here he went a little bit higher this is also maybe like the storytelling kind of higher and lower you can see the environment uh which is which is great um so thomas uh, i think you're on the call i think you just joined um love the composition but just be careful with uh, the saturations. I think you're putting a little bit too much saturation and I think you're putting a too much contrast. So I can see here on the horizon here, um, it's kind of getting a little bit blurred. Um, so please just be careful. It's good to edit, it's good to color grade, but try to um, kind of measure how much saturations that you do put. If, if it has to be saturated for a certain reason, great but not that it just becomes like uh yeah so for example here this is not not so color graded uh no not not so pushed uh -huh. so and so the other what i wanted to also say um in this photo for example there's two main things um these are all burnt so this is, doesn't really work and i mean sometimes you can get the like the long strands of lights from from the cars passing by which is also fine but you can see here it's completely burnt uh you know i mean i just zoom in here's burnt and there it's kind of burnt and then another thing is that look at the the sky um if you shot with too much iso so you need to shoot at 100 or maybe 200 iso maximum um, otherwise this is going to be rejected i mean your photo is completely uh, destroyed and also another question I actually wanted to ask you uh, are you shooting in dng or are you shooting in in jpeg because i can have a little bit of a feeling that um th these are not necessarily um shot in in in, in dng um yeah and this is just i mentioned it before you know it's like really important to be able to shoot uh, with a little bit of light in the in the sky so it's not, 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 not so black. 
Um, so yeah, numbers. So I, so I'm just a little bit lost with all these these photos here. Um, yes, I also saw here in your shots there are for some reason you started shooting in um 16 by 9 so please shoot in 4 by 3 and yeah also the you need to watch out for your for your editing you're pushing things just way too much this is why i'm thinking that you're not editing dngs you're actually editing jpegs because this normally shouldn't happen when you're audio, or maybe you're not using Lightroom. So just that you know you have access to Lightroom. Uh, everybody in Africa, I've got 10 licenses that you can all share. Uh, it's free for you, so please, please use use Lightroom. Um, you've got some great photos, um, so just, uh, I think you just need to work a little bit more on your editing. Um, aha, so last, but not least is Volker. So you sent in uh, quite a few photos. So the first, um, first subject is you sent in a lot of similars. So I would just say also when you're, when you're shooting, so here you've got these. So you've got quite a few similars. Just try to kind of single out maybe one or two that you really want to have, if you want to have some kind of repetitions, which is great. Um, but just... Um, just yeah but i i mean try to curate on your side a little bit more and then here for example the instructions are missing and the gps data is missing so i don't know what happened there um see all this these are so just wanted to mention please um because these are great photos please do a quality control before you send it. So once you've done everything, you've done your editing, you've done your done, done all your instructions in the instruction field, then just take a breath of fresh air, take a cup of tea, have a glass of water, come back, and then, because I, I know it's difficult, but um, when you've spent like hours doing things, just you need to do that quality control. It just really, really helps. Um, so yeah, I've kind of gone through everything that I wanted to. I mean, we've been like for, for an hour and a half now. Time actually went went really fast, but I wanted to give you um, this. I'm going to stop sharing. I want to give you an opportunity to maybe to ask me some more questions if there's things which are not clear, um, any workflow. Um, yeah, just uh, feel free to ask me any questions now. Paul, there are questions in the messages. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, So I will probably forget, Ali, I will probably forget to put editorial in the headline field. Wouldn't there be a fail safe somewhere before a you're wrong usage? Uh -huh. So, I mean, Michele and, and, and Nuncio, they will be the fail safe. <laughs> so if they see a photo that is editorial and it's not uh, highlighted as editorial, then they, then they will do it. But um, just for your um, homework and for your workflow, you need to in the headline field if it's if there's a, a model you need to put the model release name in in the headline field or if it's um editorial put the word editorial in there um can i resubmit all of my photos to correct both the instruction field and the slide up res on a few um Uh, yes, you can. All yes, of them you challenge. Um, yeah, but then you just need to inform uh, Nuncio and Michele, saying just send them a message or an email saying, hey, you know, um, I just realized that I'm missing some stuff. I just uh, the the resolution is is too low because they're going to reject them. So, and uh, I mean, so and then yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, what is key is 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 communication. So yeah. if you are going to um, do anything, just inform us. Um, if it's if it's got to do with the submissions, then it's Michele and, and Nuncio. Um, uh -huh. 
Uh, Mirko asks, do you have a simple way for checking the IPTC data after export? Uh, yes, you can. Um, you go to Finder. So you've exported everything. You go into Finder and you go Command I, information. It'll open up a little bar, a little dialog box, and there you'll have everything in there. And you'll be able to see. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, th that, that's where you, you, you'd be able to see that. Um, yeah, I mean, normally, if everything is in, I, I know Mirko, you've been saying that you've been having issues with the uh, IPTC and the and the information. We're going to definitely have a have a chat. We're going to look at your workflow and and seeing uh, what what's happening. But um, um, in the dialog box, if you don't tick the remove GPS location information, it should stay there. Um, but yeah, that's. Um, I mean, I think uh, on on PC you can also do the same thing. You can right click on the photo and get the information, the file. I think it's called file, file information, something like that. Um, yeah. Anybody have a question? Sorry, I can't hear you. No, I can't hear anybody. I can just hear some strange sounds. <laughs> I think it was Mickey Mouse talking. Sounded like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I just thought it was just me, <laughs> but you also heard it. Yeah. Can I comment on the IP on checking your Yeah, medit? go for it. Um, I just looked on on my Mac and you know, I open it in you know command I on the in the finder, and you know, that information is not in there. Um, and I and I know the information is in there. Um, I would suggest, you know, if you have Adobe Bridge, that's like a, another tool to look at it and just double check what's what's there. Uh, in in Finder, you have a, in the settings in Finder, you can actually say what you want to appear in the information. So if you kind of go into Finder, I think preferences, and then you can select what you want to appear or what you don't want to appear. Aha. Uh -huh. um, Hunting for that, but okay. Apple to take all those things away every time you set them when with a new update. Yeah, I mean, as you said, you can open up in Bridge, but it's you can do the same thing. You can open them up again in Lightroom. So um, yeah, it's kind of just doing it doing a double. But um, yeah, I was... not, not, I mean, most of the time, if you have put it in into your metadata and you export it properly, then everything should should be in there. Hmm. Um. Uh, other locations not shown in 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 Windows Explorer, Windows uh, does not show GPS no location. Um, yeah, that might also be the case for for Mac as well. It might not show the the the, the GPS either. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I said, if you export it properly, and Mirko, we're going to have a chat about it. We have a one on one meeting about that just to kind of look look at your workflow and to and to solve those issues. Um, so. I think um, great photos. Um, the editing is great. Just certain certain of you, as I mentioned, Thomas, you just need to. Um, I'll I'll have a chat with you also on WhatsApp um, on your how you're editing uh, and how you're shooting because your photos in terms of composition are great. Uh, just the editing just needs to be fine tuned. Um, any other questions? Okay, so. As you as you saw that as also as I mentioned, um, it was very much more about the metadata than than, than your photos uh, itself. So try to try to work on that. Thanks, Bob. Hey, Paul, I have a I have a question. Yeah. Uh, in one of the photos that you showed, that uh, rainbow in the in the distance, would AI catch that? Do you think? Um, well, the thing is that the AI would most likely recognize a rainbow when you're from the ground. So this is why we developed our own AI because it's all aerial. So when you look at a rainbow from the sky, it's completely different than from than, than from the ground. So what I would say is a fail safe, fail safe is to actually write rainbow. So yeah, I would. Um, 
Uh, Thomas, uh, you're asking, I, I seem not to be getting the par parameters for metadata. Uh, what are the right parameters uh, for the metadata? Listen, I will, I will, we can also have a chat one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, to just assist you there, um, just to explain to you um, a little bit more. Um, yeah, so I have, um, we have that document, how to upload at Amazing Aerial. So if you don't have that handy, just let me know. I'll send it to you again. That's something that you can print out, like a little bit of a Bible. Um, it's like the summary of, uh, of of how to prepare your photos and your videos. I didn't go into videos tonight. As you can see, it's been already one and a half hours. Um, but we can also go into that maybe next week, uh, go more into the videos. Uh, in terms of also... Um, how you fly, uh, the speed of your drone, uh, the different drone moves that you that you may have, also like the light. Uh, we can also talk about that next week. Um, great, thank you very much. I mean, you were uh, how many? Thirteen. Great. Thanks for joining, and uh, Nuncio, I see that you're here as well. And uh, Mirko, we're going to connect to solve your issue. And Thomas, we're also going to talk one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So thank you very much, everybody. All right. Uh, thank thanks, thanks for uh, part participating in the in the challenge. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, hope you've you've learned some some stuff tonight. And if any questions pop up in your mind, you know, you can message me on WhatsApp. And uh, yeah, Aga, keep up the good shooting. I love your style. No, uh, thank you. I'm just overworked when because uh, I'm doing like 10 things in the same time and now I'm learning this video and I'm frustrated. I just Yeah, yeah. well, it's it's so uh, you you're learning so that that's the most important. But I will I will try to shoot something this weekend. Let's see. Great, great. And uh Paul, uh thanks also for taking the time to join again i know we've had a lot of meetings lately um but you're you're always on call so that's also very nice and uh, i really love the photos that you that you submitted it's always very nature-based I, I i always like i'm always stunned by go oh, nature you know it's like uh but yeah you, you're really passionate yeah. about it and uh, you really managed to because i think maybe that's one of the most difficult things to shoot is is nature you know it's like how to compose it and how to use the different aspects of the landscape uh, for, for the composition so that's uh, that, that i think that's a great skill okay thank you yeah not to talk about all the permits and uh, no fly zones and yeah, and all the birds that you might fly into <laughs> yeah cool um great thanks a lot everybody and thanks for joining tonight have a nice uh, evening or afternoon depending where you are See you bye. later, guys. Great. Bye. 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 bye.